Today's Toy Time video is brought to you by Douglas Price. Mr. Price is the 2019 Burroughs Welcome Fund Charter School Teacher of the Year. Hi students and families, I'm Douglas Price, the 2019 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Charter School Teacher of the Year and I come hailing from Durham County. Go Bulls! And I am from Voyager Academy, which is a K-12 charter school. Go Vikings! that is right here in Durham in the northern part. Just so we can take a quick look of, to tell you a little more about where I'm from, uh, Durham County is this little county that's right here that's sandwiched in between Wake County and Orange County. Wake County is where our capital of North Carolina, Raleigh, is located, and it also happens to be uh, where I was born as well. So I'm not too terribly far from where I grew up. And Voyager Academy is in the northern part of Durham, which gets closer to Person County and to Granville County. So we have uh, many students who also hail from those counties who attend our school here. I am really Well, with today's lesson, I am super excited to present to you this great mini lesson that we do in my class every single Friday. And it's a little section of our class that we call Film Friday. Now, just a little background. Film Friday in our sixth grade class is where we drop everything that we are doing and in the middle of on a Friday at the start of class, and we break to the active board where we take a look at a short clip from a movie. Some are popular movies and some are older movies that students haven't necessarily been familiar with before. And we watch these short five to 10 minute clips and then we start to assess the literary value and created a literary analysis of the particular clip that we are watching. Now usually with these clips what we do is we also have very specific literary devices that we're looking for. Things like motif, characterization, foreshadowing, and narration style. Today we're going to take a look at one of the clips that is the most popular that we do in sixth grade every year and that is also one of my favorite movies, Up. And I'm sure many of you are already familiar with this movie because you've probably seen it before or at least seen some parts of it. What I will go ahead and tell you before we get started with our film clip is that there is no spoiler in today's movie. We are actually going to watch the first several minutes of this particular movie. Uh, but what I do want to forewarn you with is that this is a little bit of an emotional roller coaster of a scene that we're going to watch. So before you grab that blanket, before you grab that popcorn, before you grab that soda and snuggle down, I want you to just be forewarned that this can be a little bit of an emotional clip for students and parents to watch. Parents, certainly I would advise maybe previewing this clip ahead of time if you are able to uh, before allowing your child to watch this clip. Um, but if you choose to move forward with that, I might also suggest that you might wanna grab a pair of tissues or maybe three tissues that you can have by your side as we watch this clip. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to just watch the clip. Just take it in and then we're going to come back to the board and we're going to talk about some literary analysis and we're going to really break apart these scenes that we're going to watch in this particular clip. Hope you enjoy. At this time, you'll watch a couple minutes from the movie Up. Watch this clip provided at the following link so you can fully participate in the rest of Mr. Price's lesson. Welcome back. Were you moved in that clip? Did that clip make you feel joyful and excited about life and about living? Did it make you feel sorrowful and sad for the situations that Carl, Carl and Ellie both lived throughout together during their time? See, that's the great thing about movies is that movies are meant to evoke emotions from each of us. We are participants when we sit down and we watch movies, whether it's sitting at home with Netflix or Hulu, or if that's actually going to a movie theater and paying to buy a ticket to sit down and watch on the big screen these different stories that play out. Movies are meant to create a sense of feeling and emotion within each of us. And that's the first literary device that we're actually going to focus on 
with today's clip is mood and tone. Now you're going to notice that with the clips that we're doing here and the uh, literary devices we focus on, they're going to be definitions that are catered specifically to the way that movies are made. Moods are the feelings of a film that use design elements to help create that specific mood, such as a set, the costume, the lighting, and the music. Think of it this way. If it's a movie that starts out on a dark and stormy night and our lead character is walking beside a graveyard with lightning striking in the background, shadowy figures all around, maybe kind of some eerie violin music in the background, what kind of mood are we creating with that particular scene? And then we have tone that's over here. Now tone is the way that dialogue is used in the film to match the mood. But wait a second, think about the clip that we watched today. Was there dialogue? No, there wasn't dialogue. So if there isn't dialogue, then how do we get a tone out of the film? That's right, facial expressions, body actions, the way that characters are interacting, how they are acting and reacting to each other and to situations within the particular clip. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually break apart a couple of specific moments in, in this scene that we saw today to find how the mood and the tone is played with in order to force and create an emotion out of its audience members. So let's take a quick look at this first part. What a great scene, right? We've got Carl and Ellie. They're super excited because Ellie is clearly pregnant. She is preparing. Uh, they are both preparing for their child to come into this world, and they're doing so by doing one of the key things that couples do when, when this moment in their life happens, and that is uh, designing this bedroom, painting this beautiful mural that's back here. So let's look at how the mood is created. Look at the set. Look at the way the set is. Well, we're in a nursery room, which oftentimes is something that evokes happiness, specifically from parents who have already experienced this sense of joy and wonder before, that being in this nursery, that there is a happiness that exists in this space. And look at the way that the colors kind of emphasize that. You've got this bright yellow wall, Ellie right here, she's got this very vibrant pink um, handkerchief that she's wearing on top of her head. You've got the bright white crib right here. And then you have this dynamic mural that's in the background. And again, look at the way that the costumes are also there. We've got Carl and Ellie are both wearing white. They're also wearing these jeans, but Ellie has this kind of pop of pink that exists right here. Again, all meant to evoke this kind of happy, joyful moment that exists within this space. And while I don't have the music on right now, if you were to listen to the music carefully, if you go back and rewind to this scene, you're going to hear that there is this uplifting, joyful, it's almost like a carnival type feel music that exists in this moment. But then, something happens. Our mood and our tone has changed. And it did so in the course of four seconds. How did it do that? Well, let's take a look and compare. You no longer have a vibrant, bright, colored wall. In fact, you've got this very gray, very dark, very blackened wall that exists, and you've got this one door frame where you have just this little pop of light that's coming out of. And that is actually very specific for us as audience members because what it's doing is it's focusing our attention right here in the center because what it wants you to do is it wants you to see that Ellie is grieving. It wants you to see that Carl is sad. And even if we take a look at the doctor and the way that he is kind of interacting in this moment, there's not a lot of excitement in his body language. 
Their tone is matching the mood of the room. It's matching the mood of the music as well. The music slowed down. The music got soft. We went to just one instrument in this moment. It's just a piano. But what's going to happen in just a moment is that the mood is going to pick back up. You've now introduced new instruments into this. We're starting to add more color back into this moment. And now, Carl and Ellie are interacting in a more joyful, happy kind of mo uh, way. And now what they're doing is creating a montage of moments in life where these moods and these tones are creating different scenarios for them. The mood and the tone. And that's exactly what this clip does, is it continues to break down and play with a contrasting mood and tone over and over again. It moves on this, what we call a roller coaster of emotion, where you've got these really, really exciting and happy moments, and then it just pivots down and drops to this sudden moment of sorrow. And we really get to pick this back up when we get towards the end of our clip here. So let's take a look one more time about mood and tone. Here's towards the end. Carl and Ellie are getting ready to go on a picnic. They are now old in age, but I'm noticing some things in this particular clip that's starting to set the mood to move from that joyfulness to that kind of sad, somber, sorrowful, where this is headed, where we all know that this is headed. And one of our critical notes that we can take out of this to help us figure this out is what time of day is it? It's a sunset. And it's also, that sunset is also a metaphor that the sun is setting on somebody's time here on earth. And we all know because you've watched the clip already, we know that the sun is setting on Ellie's time. Ellie is eventually going to pass away, and so this is starting to set us up as an audience to prepare our emotions that the mood and the tone is getting ready to shift, is getting ready to change. And so Carl and Ellie go through this situation together, and look again how the camera is moving us into that sadness. and listen to the music one more time. It's no longer a bunch of instruments. We're left solo with one instrument, and that's the piano. As Carl and Ellie say goodbye. Wow, what a fantastic way that the director and animators took us through that roller coaster of emotions. Now, our second literary device that we're going to go over today is my personal favorite uh, that I enjoy finding in movies, and that is symbolism. Now, with symbolism, symbolism is all around us. We have symbols that are everywhere. Think about road signs that don't have words. Those are symbols. They tell us something. And even the ones that do have words, they are still symbolizing something that we need to know as we're driving on the road, such as a stop sign or a caution, or maybe there's the orange cone that's on the road because maybe that means that there's construction ahead, or maybe there's a hazard that's on the road that we need to be aware of. Symbolism exists everywhere in our society. And it still exists even within movies. So symbolism, our definition that we're using is that it is something tangible that you can either see or that you can touch in order to represent a bigger idea or an emotion. Up is full of symbols, but today we're only gonna go over two symbols that show up in our particular clip. So let's take a look here. I've paused it at a particular moment in our movie with Carl and with Ellie, hanging out at the zoo at the beginning. Now, 
with Carl and Ellie, both of these characters are symbolized by some specific shapes. Squares and ovals. And if you really take this and break it apart, you're going to see that Carl is the one represented by our square here, and Ellie is the one that's represented by our oval. Take a look at the way that Carl is designed. He has some pretty striking features that lead him to have more of a box shape, such as the rigidness of his chin that has straight lines that make it up, or even the rigidness of the cuff of his shirt. And hey, there's a square that's right there. Even his fingers are cut off with straight edges as opposed to being rounded. Now, think about Carl again. What does he do at the zoo? He sells the balloons at the balloon stand. Well, let's take a look at that balloon stand. That balloon stand is a square shape, but hold up, because that square shape at that balloon stand is also covered with some circular features, like the wheel, that's right there, or better yet, a more ovular shape, are balloons, which symbolize Ellie. Take a look at the way that Ellie is designed. She has almost a balloon-like shape to her face. Her fingers are rounded as opposed to being squared off at the tips. And she even has this parrot here that's rounded out in kind of a ovular fashion. You catching all this so far? Now, the question is, is why? Why would the animators decide to make Carl and Ellie to be represented by squares and circles or ovals? Well, there's an old saying from way back even before I was born where people would say to each other, don't be a square. Now I want you to think about that phrase for a moment. They used to use it as a way to kind of taunt kids on the playground or kind of as a way to bully them. Man, you're such a square. Don't be a square. Well, really what they were trying to say in that particular moment was that you're not thinking outside the box, or sometimes it would also mean that uh, you're being too rigid in your structure. Break the rules a little bit. Be flexible. Because think about, think about a square. How flexible is that shape or does that shape look to you versus how flexible does a circle look to you? Take a moment to think about that. Well, let's keep playing this clip for a second because if you don't believe me about these circles and squares, the next scene is going to emphasize it even more. Here we have Carl and Ellie sitting down in their respective chairs that they have moved into their new home. Well, let's take a look. Well, here are those squared off edges of those fingertips on Carl that I mentioned just a second ago. And again, you can see kind of the rigid structure of his face. But take a look at the shape of his chair right here and how it's kind of squared off in a way. Again, having these more straight lines that go down. Take a look at the lamp that's next to him. Take a look at the lampshade that's right next to him. Take a look at his coffee mug that's right next to him. And even the table, or tables I should say, because there's two of them, that are stacked on top of each other. Again, emphasized by square. And even take a look at his pant legs down here, kind of squared off. Still don't believe me? All right, let's assess how Ellie is. Here's that balloon rounded shaped face of hers that we talked about. There's her rounded edge fingertips that she has. And even look at the way that her legs are crossed over in a way that makes kind of that balloon shape yet again. But let's keep going. Take a look at the chair she's sitting in. Take a look 
at her lampshade that's next to her and the lamp that it's on kind of circular in space and even that teacup and the circular stand that's right next to her chair squares and circles because they emphasize the character of who they are they are symbols of who each of these characters are ellie is the free flowing free thinking willing to go whatever way the wind is blowing she's very easy she's very flexible whereas carl if you've seen this movie you understand that he's very rigid in structure he has things that he wants to do at specific times of the day. He doesn't break from his routine. There's certain things that he does. He goes to work. He comes home. He does his chores. He goes to bed. He wakes up. He does the same thing over and over again. And there's not really a break in the mold for Carl. And they also are meant to be contrast of each other. Now, I want you to think about this, and I'm not going to tell you what the answer is, but I want you to think deeply. One of the critical symbols in this entire movie are balloons. Because think about it. Balloons are what's taking the house. Balloons being that circular shape are taking the house, which by the way is that square shape, and are taking it to Paradise Falls where they've always talked about going where Carl tries to escape away to after Ellie has passed away. Well, think about what that symbolizes. Because this is kind of a crazy story when you think about it. A house that floats by balloons to go to South America, to Paradise Falls, where he's always wanted to go with his wife, Ellie. What could it possibly symbolize? What more could we find of symbolic nature between those squares and those circles that are in this movie? I would love to hear more of your thoughts about what you think about this particular movie, or maybe you want to try an activity of your own. Maybe you want to talk about maybe some mood and tone for a particular clip that you've seen, or maybe you want to talk about symbolism, or maybe you have a different literary device that your ELA teacher has taught you about that you would love to apply to a movie that you've seen before and you want to emphasize that moment of learning. There's a great website called voicethread.com that you can go to and you can pull up a picture. Maybe it's a poster of the movie that you want to talk about. And you can record a video clip or even an audio recording if you don't want to do the video to just talk through. This would be a great activity for you to do at home and maybe to send to your ELA professor or teacher to emphasize the learning and show them that you are learning and applying the things that they have taught you this year and you're putting it to something that you are most interested in. In this instance, it might be one of your favorite movies. Hope you enjoy this time. Students, your homework is to think about the things that Mr. Price taught you the next time you watch a movie or a TV show. Look at the movie with a critical eye. Notice the symbols, the colors, the music, and any other element that might contribute to the meaning of the movie. Have fun and happy viewing!